Hi, I'm Barbara Seelig Brown. Welcome to Stress Free Cooking. Today I'm cooking with Tom Beyer. We love to cook together. Today we're going to take you on a little tour of our trip to Italy, some of our favorite dishes, which were stuffed artichokes and a pasta made with mascarpone cheese and a variety of mushrooms. So to get started, Tom, I'll do the artichokes and I'm gonna let you prepare the acidulated water for the artichokes. So we have a strainer and a fork so that we don't get any of the seeds of the lemon into the water. And the reason we're going to put lemon in our water to steam the artichoke is simply because the artichoke's brown and the lemon keeps them from browning. So we cut off the stem and we cut off the top so it gives us room to separate the artichoke like this when it's cooked. And in the meantime, if any of my leaves were very sharp, I would take a scissor and I would just trim the sharp points off. So let me do the other one. And there are a couple of tips about lemons, right? There are. I noticed that you rolled this lemon before it was cut and it enables a little more juice to come out of it. These are very juicy lemons here. And plus, I learned that straining it into the strainer, that way you don't have pits in everything and uh, it's just in the strainer. Perfect. So I learned something today. Also, if the lemon is room temperature, you'll get a little more juice out of it. So into the pan we go with the artichokes. We're gonna grab that glass plate and I'm gonna put this glass plate on top. This will weight down the artichokes so that they will stay in the water and steam a little better. We need a pot lid. And that's really all you need to do. So while the artichokes are cooking, let's make the stuffing. And actually, Tom, I'm gonna let you crush a clove of garlic for me. So we like to clean up as we go along. And that way at the end, we don't feel so overwhelmed. So to peel your garlic, all you have to do is crush it with the side of your chef's knife. And you can see the skin comes right off. The garlic is also partially broken up, almost cut. So then we just take our chef's knife and give it a rough cut. Do you want more, more garlic in this? No, one's good. It's good. Perfect. So, you want to make sure you rock that knife back and forth and you're not lifting it up completely off the cutting board. So that looks great. So we're going to put a little bit of extra virgin olive oil into our saute pan. And then the garlic. Thank you. And we're going to put some pancetta in here. Could you crush those pignoli nuts for me? Yes. So pancetta is an Italian bacon that is not smoked. So it really has very little fat. So that's why I like to use pancetta in my recipes instead of good old American bacon. So we're gonna brown this a little bit. We're also gonna be adding some pignoli nuts. And a great way to crush your nuts, as you can see, is put them in a plastic bag. You could use a meat pounder to crush them. You can use a little heavy frying pan, a heavy pot, whatever you have that would be heavy enough to crush those nuts. And since we want these toasted, we're gonna add these to our pancetta, olive oil, and garlic mixture. Crave Brothers is a family-run business producing award-winning mozzarella and many other farmstead cheeses. Their mozzarella and marinated mozzarella are fresh and light, and their mascarpone is velvety smooth. They also produce cheddar cheese curds, which are great for snacking. Their cheese is green energy produced and made from fresh, high quality milk from their own dairy farm. You can find their cheeses at www.cravecheese.com and many other national retailers. We're sure you'll enjoy these cheeses as much as we do.
it looks like our pancetta is nicely browned, our garlic is cooked, and I wanted my pignoli nuts toasted, so it was easy enough to just add them to this saute pan with everything else. Sometimes I want toasted pignolis for a salad, and those I would do in just a dry skillet and keep my eye on them. Once they start to brown, then I have my toasted pignoli. So Tom, I think we're gonna take this, we're gonna make the rest of the mixture, okay? Let me come around and I'm gonna give you this, okay? Let it cool off just a second. And then we'll add the breadcrumbs. And once we mix all that together, we'll add the Parmesan cheese. So Parmesan Reggiano is a really wonderful, full-flavored cheese. Sometimes it seems like it's a little expensive, but the better ingredients you buy, the more flavor you're gonna get. So the more fresh they are, and the more quality you buy, you end up with a much more flavorful dish. I'll give you this, because you're gonna need that, and you need to mix those breadcrumbs in. Okay, so this will be the stuffing for our artichokes. And we do want to let that cool just a minute before we add the Parmesan cheese, because we don't want that Parmesan cheese to completely melt. It'll melt while the artichokes are in the oven. So once the artichokes are stuffed, we'll put them in a baking pan, and we'll put them in the oven for about 20 minutes or so. You can go ahead and add the, yeah, add the parm. Okay. And then we're also going to add about two pinches of salt and pepper. So we have a little bowl here with a blend, 50% salt, 50% pepper, and a pinch is about a quarter of a teaspoon. So we want a couple pinches. Our pancetta could be a little bit salty, so we don't want to add too much salt. We can always add more salt at the table, right? Mm -hmm. How does that look? Is it well blended? I believe so. It looks good. Okay, so our stuffing is all together. Mm -hmm. Our artichokes should be cooked. I'm gonna grab my casserole dish, and thank you, Tom. We're gonna to take the plate off, great. And if you could give me one of those hot artichokes in here, upside down. I'm gonna let it drain a minute. Perfect, I'll take two. Great, thank you. So we're just gonna let these drain for a minute, and once they've drained, I could turn them over, and the water that drained out will actually be fine in the bottom of this pan. So I'm gonna pull these artichokes apart. And as we always say, your hands are your best kitchen tools. So now what I'm gonna do is take that stuffing. So I'll take this stuffing, and it's perfectly mixed. Do that. Grab a spoon. And we'll just start stuffing our artichokes. So they'll soften up a little more while they're baking. And we just want this really yummy stuffing to get in between all the leaves. Okay, so pull them apart. It's a little bit of effort, but it's certainly worth it. Okay, we're gonna pull them apart. And we're gonna stuff these. On to the other one. These were a little bit on the smaller side. Sometimes you see really, really giant artichokes in the store. It can be a little bit messy. Okay, so I'm just going to take the rest of my stuffing and drizzle it over the top. And then I'll drizzle a little bit of extra virgin olive oil over the top, like so. And we're gonna pop these into the oven for about 20 minutes or so. Cake Bread Cellars was founded in 1973 by Jack and Dolores Cake Bread. Now the second generation of cake breads are running the winery. Cake bread has been known for its unparalleled wines and its gracious hospitality. Mainly in the Napa Valley and the North Coast, you can visit the winery or watch for cake bread events in your area. 
with an enduring commitment to quality, the belief that life's occasions are elevated by good people, good food, and good wine flows through everything they do. The Cake Breads take great pride in sharing their family with our families. Let's go on to our next dish, which will be a pasta with a mascarpone mushroom sauce. So I have my water boiling for my pasta, and you want your water at a very rapid boil. And you also want to make sure that you have plenty of water in the pot, so the pot should be almost full. We're going to add a little bit of salt. Some people like two, three tablespoons. I think just, you know, a little bit in the palm of your hand is plenty. So let's add our bow tie pasta. I'm gonna, thank you. I'm gonna put the lid back on and we're gonna let this cook for about nine or 10 minutes. So while we're doing that, let's start the sauce. Okay. So Tom, would you mind giving us a clove of crushed garlic? And you're gonna see how Tom crushes the garlic so that it makes your work nice and easy. The skin comes right off when you crush it with the side of a chef's knife. And it's almost partially chopped, so now he just has to give it a nice rough chop. And those skins always stick to you, I know. It gets kind of funky, but um, just run your hand under water. So once that garlic is chopped, I'm gonna put it in this saute pan, which I have a little bit of extra virgin olive oil in. Would you like more? More garlic? Uh, yeah, I think two would be perfect. So we'll start cooking this. And you want to be careful with your garlic. You don't want it to get black. So keep your eye on it and let it get nice and golden brown, but not too much darker than that. And not, don't let it go to the blackened stage or it's going to turn bitter and you're going to want to take it out of your pan and start over. So while this is sauteing, we're also going to go on and chop up our mushrooms. So we have some porcini, we have some shiitake, we have some hen of the woods. We have a nice variety of mushrooms. You can use any mushrooms that you have or that are available in your grocery store. But for our purposes today, we were lucky enough to get these gourmet mushroom mixes from Melissa's Produce. So we'll just give those a nice rough chop because we want nice meaty mushrooms in our dish. We want to really taste those mushrooms. And you can, you know, I'm going to move this pan over to you, Tom. Okay. And as you're chopping them, you can just throw them right in that saute pan. And we'll grab a spatula so we can stir those while they're cooking. These sizes okay? Bigger, Perfect. smaller? Yeah, we want that. That looks good because we want some mouthfeel to these mushrooms. They're going to shrink up a little bit. Mushrooms have a lot of moisture, so as they're cooking, we're going to get a lot of liquid in this pan. And the next thing we'll do after we add the mushrooms is I'm going to add some white wine and some mascarpone cheese so that we get a nice creamy sauce. Crave Brothers is a family-run business producing award-winning mozzarella and many other farmstead cheeses. Their mozzarella and marinated mozzarella are fresh and light and their mascarpone is velvety smooth. They also produce cheddar cheese curds which are great for snacking. Their cheese is green energy produced and made from fresh, high quality milk from their own dairy farm. You can find their cheeses at www.cravecheese.com and many other national retailers. We're sure you'll enjoy these cheeses as much as we do.
We're gonna let these mushrooms cook for a few minutes and then we'll be adding some mascarpone. So today I'm adding mascarpone from Crave Brothers Cheese and it's a family run company. The cheese is really wonderful. They have their own dairy cows. Isn't that delicious? That is delicious. It would be great Very good. on a bagel. On my bagel in the morning. Right. Yeah, perfect. And this cheese is also the main ingredient in tiramisu. So um, if you're a tiramisu fan, you want to get yourself some mascarpone cheese. Okay. Let's give these another couple of minutes. They're reducing a little bit. And I'm seeing some liquid coming out of them. They look great. And in the meantime, I'm getting ready. I'm going to grab some wine. So we're going to add wine to this dish. The wine's going to do two things. It's going to deglaze the bottom of the pan. So if there's any brown bits on the bottom of the pan, also known as fond, it will pick up all those bits and it will add to our sauce. When you're cooking with wine, you want to cook with a wine that you would drink. Mm, this is delicious. So I'm cooking with a Chardonnay because I want this dish to be very buttery and very creamy. Why don't you give that a taste and see what you think, Tom? It is creamy, very nice. And normally I would not cook with a Chardonnay that was really oaky because I don't want my dish to have that oaky flavor, but I definitely want a very lightly oak Chardonnay or a Chardonnay that has no oak on it so that I get a buttery flavor, but, but no wood in the dish. So let's add this Chardonnay, and let's let that cook a little bit. The wine is going to reduce, and when you cook with wine, it's a great way to concentrate flavors, because as the wine reduces, it will concentrate the flavors. And since we're trying to cook as healthy as possible, even though we're using marsicone cheese, we're gonna cut down on some of the fat by, typically this dish would have been started with butter. And we didn't do that. We started it with extra virgin olive oil, which is heart healthy. Our mushrooms are just about done. So Tom, let's add the uh, mascarpone to this. And I'll stir while you add. So add it to the center of the pan. Okay? And this will melt quickly. So it'll give us a nice sauce between the wine, the mascarpone. Oh, pasta's almost done, so we'll take the lid off of that. And mascarpone is also known as Italian cream cheese. So it's a little bit lighter and sweeter than our cream cheese. Was that all of it? That's all of it. Yeah. Okay. And I could use a couple pinches of that salt and pepper. Okay. And if you would keep stirring that for me, I'm going to drain my pasta. But before I do that, I'm going to grab my pasta dish and I'm going to put it on top of my pasta pot to warm this. So we'll give this a couple of minutes on top of that boiling water. It'll help to warm the pasta dish. And then we will be all set to put this whole dish together. And we'll top it off with some Parmigiano Reggiano. So let's get our pasta dish ready. My pot has holes in the lid, so it's all ready to drain. Cake Bread Cellars was founded in 1973 by Jack and Dolores Cake Bread. Now the second generation of cake breads are running the winery. Cake Bread has been known for its unparalleled wines and its gracious hospitality. Mainly in the Napa Valley and the North Coast, you can visit the winery or watch for Cake Bread events in your area. With an enduring commitment to quality, the belief that life's occasions are elevated by good people, good food, and good wine flows through everything they do. The Cake Breads take great pride in sharing their family with our families.
I drained this, but I did leave just a tiny bit of cooking liquid in this pot because the cooking liquid from the pasta has the starch in it and it will help bring this dish together. Put some of that Parmesan in here and I'll mix it up and then we'll put some on top. This is nice and creamy. It's really coming together. And you can see how hot this is. Yes. Now that our pasta is done, let's take a look at the artichokes. So, here's the stuffed artichokes. Two of us, yeah, right? Terrific. Um, this is an easy dish to make as many as you need. Um, the recipe usually serves four, but you know, depending on the size of the artichokes, Excellent. it might be that some people want to share one. Sometimes we cut them in half. Right. So, let's take a taste. And to complement our dishes, I thought that this cake bread Chardonnay would be very nice because it's really a very nice tropical flavor. It's got a little bit of butter and that seems to go with everything we have on the table here. Thank you. I love the color of this wine. It's such a pretty golden color. So let's have a toast and then we'll taste. Cheers. One of our favorite wines. It's terrific. It's always well balanced. Mm -hmm. It's always very fresh tasting. So let's take a little taste, Tom. Pull out one of those leaves that's full of stuffing. Okay. And you just. Take a little bite. And you only eat the bottom of the leaf. How is it? Delicious, very tasty. So you taste the pancetta, mm -hmm. the parmigiano, the parmigiano, garlic. The bread, breadcrumbs. How about a little taste of pasta? So you can see that nice cheese is all melted in it's there. It's still hot, steaming. It's still nice and hot and steaming. Pasta should be nice and hot and steamy, right? Yeah. Here, we'll share that. So let's move these, grab a fork, mm. one for you. Nice and creamy. There's the earthiness of the mushrooms. Mm. Another wine that I might suggest when you're having mushroom dishes, Pinot Noir is always a nice complement to mushroom dishes, right. don't you think, because of that nice earthy flavor? It is, this is terrific. Mm. I'm Barbara Seelig Brown. This is Tom Beyer. We both want to thank you for watching us today on Stress Free Cooking. You can find us on Instagram at Stress Free Cook, Facebook, Stress Free Cooking with host Barbara Seelig Brown. We both wish you lots of health, happiness, and delicious dishes.
Cellars was founded in 1973 by Jack and Dolores Cakebread. Now the second generation of cake breads are running the winery. Cake bread has been known for its unparalleled wines and its gracious hospitality. Mainly in the Napa Valley and the North Coast, you can visit the winery or watch for cake bread events in your area. With an enduring commitment to quality, the belief that life's occasions are elevated by good people, good food, and good wine flows through everything they do. The Cake Breads take great pride in sharing their family with our families.